we didn't have time in class to look at how to plot trend lines in Microsoft Excel. And so I want to show you one or two things about that so that you will be able to do that conveniently. Let's say that we're going to look at the relationship between years and price. You'll notice here that the way years is dealt with is that we have uh, only a small set of uh, years. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and so we have seven different observations for years. So it's not strictly a, a variable that's continuous. If it was continuous, then we would have things like 2.1 years, 2.2 years, and so forth, but what's happened is time has been chopped into these discrete things, and that does some things to our charts when we do our charts. And we're going to look at that and uh, also look at an example of plotting a trend line and looking at the R squared on there. To chart in Excel, we can select variables by holding the control key down and selecting the variables, and we can insert the charts and we're going to select a scatter chart. And so what we have here is in our scatter chart we can see, and this is what we looked at when we in the earlier video where we were seeing dots stacked on top of each other. So they're not really showing up here, but we know that from our memory here that there were lots of dots stacked on top of each other, dots or observations stacked on, each, on top of each other. So now let's go ahead and add a trend line. So by right-clicking on the data, we can select Add Trend Line, and then Excel gives us trend line options. We can display an equation on a chart, and we can also display the R squared on a chart, and I'm going to drag this up so you can actually see the equation. So what this is saying is that when only years are put into the model for price, then every year a car increases in terms of going from one-year-old to two-year-old to three-year-old and so forth it drops about two thousand dollars of value in, in euros and so and uh, and so that's quite a big it's quite a significant hit of a car devaluing every year because of the passage of time and so as cars get older clearly their their prices go down and we can see this here in, in this relationship there are a number of different types of relationships that we might look at so if we want to format the trend line by right-clicking on it, uh, the default is linear, and that's a good default. And we can actually see that this default linear line um, doesn't fit the data too badly. It has an R squared of 0.78, which is pretty high. Uh, we can just sort of visually see that maybe we've got a little bit of a bow down here, and we can look at other forms of equations that can deal with things like bows fairly easily. So one that can do deal with bows fairly well is exponential. And so when we look at exponential, it bows a little bit, but that's really not any better than what we had with the linear model, which was 0.78. If we look at polynomial, it actually does a little bit better. So let me move this up so you can see. So basically we have a, a quadratic equation where we have x squared, and then we have an x term, and then we have a constant in here. And the R squared rose about 0.04, so it went from 0.78 to 0.82. This is a good fit. It fits very well. And, and so we don't need to be overly concerned right now that this form of an equation is actually a little bit better in terms of R squared than the linear equation is. For one thing, we know we're going to put other variables in. We're going to be looking at kilometers. We're going to be looking at weight and other things. And so... The fact that we have price decreasing as years increase and that it's fairly linear is helpful. But I wanted you to see that you can actually plot different types of equations and actually see which best fits the data. Uh, we've looked at three now. If I were to pick logarithmic here and I were to pick power, then what would happen is this would disappear. It basically would fail. And the reason it's failing, if I select logarithmic, which is not designed to do that, then it says, well, some trend lines can't be calculated from data containing negative or zero values. What's happening is we have some cars in here that have zero years. They are new cars, essentially. They're, they're not even an entire year old. And so when we throw a, a zero into a log, logarithmic equation, then it fails. And, and so when we say OK, then what happens is Excel just yanks that line off of there. It's sort of a way of saying, no, 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 you, that's not something you should have done. 
And so it's not that something's wrong with the software, it's actually doing something intelligent to tell us that we actually tried to plot an equation on it that didn't make sense. And it, and it really gave us a pretty good error message that was pretty helpful. I like error messages that tell me why things don't work or why things work. Of course, we can add the trend line back and we can put it back on there and, and, uh, and, and work with it. So that's how, that's how we plot trend lines. That's how we can move amongst different forms of equations to see which maps the best. The other thing is that you'll notice that we have an R squared here. This R squared is 0.78. And you might recall that when we looked at the correlation matrix and looked at the relationship between year and price, that it had a negative 0.85, as I recall, correlation. Well, if you take 0.85 and you square it, you get 0.78. And so what's happening is this point, this R squared is an indication of how much Y can be explained by X. If you only have one X, if you've got multiple X's in a model, then R squared takes into account all of those X's. And so the relationship between R, which is Pearson correlation, correlation which is designed to calculate the correlation between a number and a number, and you square it, you get R squared. Uh, if you've got multiple variables in the model, the calculation for R squared is more complex. But for correlations in the simple one predictor model for linear regressions, then it's very simple. The little r, which is the symbol for correlation, you square that and you get r squared. And that's actually what translates into this number right here. And I have you do a couple of examples uh, in your homework just to look at that and, and, and uh, you know, practice that idea.